Yeah, those other Pumpkinhead movies were fine and all, but what if he was inserted into a modern Hatfields and McCoy story with a dash of Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> I'd make a joke, but I actually am intrigued by this. That's right, Pumpkinhead 4 Blood Feud features star-crossed lovers falling for each other despite their warring families named the Hatfields and McCoys, but perhaps they can summon Pumpkinhead to serve as a mediator for this feud? This fourth entry was part of Pumpkinhead Romanian style, in which parts 3 and 4 were filmed back-to-back -back in Bucharest for the Sci-Fi Channel, with this one airing on February 10th, 2007. Seven. I guess it kinda is the perfect pumpkin head plot to air around Valentine's Day? Because they were shot back to back, this one had some of the same crew, like Rob Lord still does the music, and Eric Wilson still served as cinematographer, and acting wise, Lance Henriksen comes back as Ed Harley, and Lynn Verall plays Haggis again as she did in 3. However, writing and directing duties this time went to Mike Hurst, who's done some sequels and some sorta sequels. He directed House of the Dead 2 and also wrote The Graveyard, which was originally intended to be Bloody Murder 3. Once again, it opens with someone chasing somebody in the woods. Hopefully it's just a contractor who's running way behind on giving this place the makeover it truly needs. Don't worry, I'll just stay here, killing time for the plot to catch up. I'll look at some photo albums. It's a pumpkin head movie. Someone is bound to be in a motorcycle accident at some point. <laughs> Too soon? You're lucky Ed Harley isn't around to see that crash again, since, well, he'll be everywhere else in this. Though this time, it's the CGI effect of Pumpkinhead that has caused the accident. I'm putting it together that it was this guy who brought forth the Demon of Vengeance. Could be because they had something to do with the death of whoever this is, or it could be because he's tired of hearing all those damn motorcycle sounds at night. They can talk it out. That's worked before. We should have gone to jail for what we've done, but... Killing us won't bring her back! It's talk like that that means Pumpkinhead is for sure gonna crash through the window. I'm starting to feel like I'm just reviewing the same movie over and over again. Is something bad also gonna happen to the guy who summoned the demon? For Angela. I'm taking you with me! Well, I don't know what the plot is about, but it feels kind of pointless now, and it leaves me with more questions. Yeah, one day you'll be coming back, and there'll be no place you can hide. Once again, Ed is the ghost that explains what's going on, but I'm very confused, because in part three, Ed was enjoying a nice new black suit, whereas in this one, he ditched the suit and said, you know, I'm going back to wearing my redneck gear from the first. Ed needs to settle on a style. Anyway, it's five years later. Okay, I don't even know what that opening was about, let alone needing a follow-up at this wedding, sponsored by Bush Beer. <laughs> Grandpa doesn't need any drinks. Something queer about that boy. He stopped being insulted by my schoolyard taunts. They haven't taken that word back, have they? It's the McCoy wedding party, where if you're not getting drunk at the wedding, it's because you've already shown up drunk like the Hatfields here. You McCoy's always thinking you're better than everyone else. <laughs> yeah. Please, please, I happen to think I'm better than the both of you, especially your ADR work. I'm sorry too, Jody, but no half is are loud. It's just the way it is. If we give him a voice from Red Dead Redemption, folks will for sure think the actor is Southern. The Hatfields don't stand for no McCoys getting married in these parts. That's why they keep their weddings strictly in the family. I sense a shenanigansy porky style prank. What are you even planning on doing? They already have cow shit stuck to the bottom of their shoes. And at this point, all these beer bottles are filled with urine from their backed up beer bladders. That explains the temper. You half ill sons of bitches! Get out! I'm just the DJ. It don't matter. This is a wedding and we're gonna start brawling. 
What evil could Pumpkinhead bring to this town that's any worse than these idiots tearing up the place themselves? This explains the rest of the series to me. That's why the area looked nice in Part 2 and went back to looking like shit in Part 3. It's because the Hatfields and McCoys showed up to brawl so hard it became a swamp again. It's like I'm watching West Side Story if Maria was simply the name of his pickup truck and the war was over who hates Bud Light the most. I know more about what kind of beer they drink than the actual characters. Let's go back to our clubhouse so we can confuse Grandpa and drink some more. Are we done for you, Uncle Abner? <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. For the love of God, bring me an old whore! Jody wants to see the best in the McCoys, but Papa Hatfield is mad about them ruining the land for years and turning it to sand. Abner was playing in the road one day, and they hit him with that damn car. McCoys was supposed to give us the car to make amends. That's why this feud started. Also, because you're bored and have nothing else to do in this town. That's why Jody wants to sneak out and see that McCoy youngin Ricky. You going out to see that McCoy boy? I already called dibs on him. He's mine. You go and see your boy. Just be careful. Leave the curtains open a little so I can be watching. Here's hoping the strong love of Jody and Ricky carries through the generations. I keep forgetting Pumpkinhead is supposed to be in this. I'm sitting here like, oh no, the crazy Hatfields are going to find out where the lovers are. Plus, Ricky has already promised to marry one of his cousins. I'm not joking. But perhaps he and Jody can run away together. Is this Pumpkinhead? Or am I watching Tubi TV try their hand at a Yellowstone series? Plus, there's no need to quiet down the lookout. Just simply turn her ADR off. Everyone else is dubbed. Hey, girl, be quiet now. Hey, come on, Billy Bob. What you doing? That's a McCoy. Oh, what was that? I sense post-production VO work. And gentlemen, no need for the flashlights. You're already in the most brightly lit woods in the area. Sadly, she still falls and accidentally kills herself. No need to stop the lovemaking now, other than it ain't Grandpa watching this time. <gasps> you no good dirty slut, McCoy. Ain't you got no self-respect? Says the guy whose underpants are just a caked-on cow pie. Let's take a break. This is a bar fight I've got no involvement in. Therefore, I don't give a damn who wins this feud. We're back. Have they settled their differences? <laughs> I don't know if they're killing Ricky or if that's just one of their redneck games they like to play. The hell? Well, that ain't so bad. Glad they used their dirty socks as rope. That broke off easily from the hardened foot sweat. Oh, and he finds the body of his sister. These characters are so backwoods and dirty, they make Witch Haggis look like Grace Kelly. It's all working out. If you just so happen to pass out in front of the witch's house, might as well ask her for vengeance if the ghosts let her. I know what you can do. The kind of help you can give him ain't any help at all. I guess he can just appear to anyone he wants in this one. Of all the people who have summoned Pumpkinhead, why is Ed Harley the only one who can wander the earth as a ghost and just show up to give advice when he pleases? I know, it's because Lance Henriksen plays him and they want to bring him back. But what about the love story? It's about the McCoys being scum and ruining this town! Daddy, I love him! Yep. I commend the Sci-Fi Channel for trying their hand at making a soap opera. And for the actors who aren't dubbed, they are acting their asses off in it. There's more lovers, too. Why does it look like Ed is putting his clothes back on? Did he and Haggis sleep together? You're weirding out Ricky! I got work to do. Who are you talking to? Nobody. 
that I could have shown myself to Ricky, but I decided not to. No reason. I just want to make Haggis look weird. Ricky wants to summon Pumpkinhead to take revenge on the Hatfields for the death of his sister. As drunkenly stupid as this family war has been, I'm surprised it's taken this long for one to summon Pumpkinhead. They feel like the kinds of families that would bring about the demon of vengeance because one set fire to a bag of shit on their porch. Anyway, the deal is complete when she gives him the necklace of Ed's son from the first. Guess that's a rule now. As for his sister's body, she's comfortable out front. Don't give her no mind. Soon he'll take her back home to this abandoned schoolhouse they're squatting in, where the McCoys come running outside like it's the house equivalent of a clown car. What, do they all sleep on top of each other? It is the first one where the lead has better things to do, so the witch just digs Pumpkinhead up herself. Usually I ask people to bring me the body so I can do this in the cabin, but I want to see these idiot families dead myself. Just let them accidentally kill each other. They're drunk on moonshine and start walking towards strange noises they hear. They had to kill off these two first. That saves the production a lot of money on the ADR budget. Seriously, it looks like Pumpkinhead is standing there laughing at one accidentally setting himself on fire. Though I like the added touch that Ricky is the first character where when he has visions of the killings, not only is he not disturbed by it, but he seems pretty freaking turned on. Yep, I'm getting what I paid for. Why should I complain? Oh, and while Ed can't appear to Ricky, he can to Jody, I guess. I had a son once. <sighs> he slipped right through my fingers. I know, that was the better movie. Sorry, I needed to tell my backstory to someone again. Witch Haggis was up all night digging, so she crashed at about 5 a.m. Hope you don't mind. Oh, and that was a dream, so Ed can appear to you in real life and also in your dreams. Is it the moonshine that's making this movie make up shit as it goes along? While Amy Manson and Bradley Taylor are fine in it, the movie just starts with the two of them together. We don't see how they met or fell in love, we just see drunken brawls. It makes it to where I really have no stakes in this romance. They're just telling me that they're in love. I don't care if they stay together. Also, Dallas, the guy at the beginning, is the sheriff now. You've seen this before, ain't you? You just stay away from me. You don't have to be afraid of me, Dallas. And it's one of those procedurals where the sheriff is going to solve the case with the help of ghosts. Somewhere I can go? You can go straight to hell. I think he just likes messing with people at this point. But while we've got Ed back from the first, why not redo the bullying scene as well? Only more half-assed. Keep away from Pumpkinhead, unless you're tired of living. His enemies are mostly dead. He's mean and unforgiving. Why are you all so bored? Are you picking on this girl while you're all in the midst of a sugar crash and you need a nap? And they're not even getting the backstory right. But there ain't no pumpkin head. Tell that to Ed Harley. Did you say Ed Harley? Yeah, he was the one who first called him. He's not the first. That movie opened with a dude in the 1950s getting chased. And don't forget Pumpkinhead's son, Tommy Pumpkins, who kind of looks like he should be related to the Hatfields and McCoys in this. All right, boys, we'll trap that Pumpkinhead. Let's go to the bar. Roll credits. We saved a ton. But if there's a noise, you know what to do. <laughs> Trees continue to be their mortal enemies when they walk around shit-faced. That and holes they fall in, making it easier for Pumpkinhead once more. <laughs> yeah, probably just a rabid warthog, right? Let's run home, and by that I mean getting my legs stuck in our own trap. Haha, <laughs> damn, we're stupid. Helping him makes it worse. They free him from the trap by cutting his leg off. You could've just pried it open. I'm doing you all a favor by putting you out of your misery. We need to sever your bloodlines immediately. The only way I can tell the difference between the families is that sometimes the McCoys got on suit jackets they got from a Salvation Army. Poor Pumpkinhead is like, I really can't tell a lot of you apart. 
I'm just gonna kill anyone I see in the woods and assume I'm getting the right person. Must have been a lot of people. This chase goes on till morning. How did Pumpkinhead not catch up to him? And how did a truck hit him before a literal demon? I'm surprised it wasn't Ed driving, saying, Vengeance will come back to slam you in the back like a fast-moving truck. All this fighting amongst the people in the town, though, and no one even stopped to point out that Witch Haggis has kind of fixed up the place a little. It's the most relaxing the Gateway to Hell cabin has ever looked. She even put new windows in. I'm sure on account of Pumpkinhead smashing through them at some point, probably. It also may be the first time someone goes to see her and she's not even home. Serves you right coming to see the witch on the one day a week she walks to town and picks up new vegetables from the farmer's market. She's got Pumpkinhead staying behind to watch over the land. He has a very distinct pre-packaged effects look to him. But really, I think even the demons are rooting for true love. That boy must really love you. You being a Hatfield and all. Ooh, Long Legs had a nice trip to the market. I bought some flour. You know what they really should have done to tie the movies together? Have Andy Robinson's ghost show up to give the new sheriff pointers too. Don't know if Andy Robinson's character is dead or not. It's possible he just left town because what's being a sheriff around here even matter? It's the most vigilante loving land in the whole country. On second thought, though, maybe Ricky summoning a demon to kill her family wasn't the most romantic thing in the world. You let Ricky sentence my family to death for something they maybe didn't even do? It ain't her fault. Why are you even here? Haggis was doing a good enough job explaining shit. Yeah, that's my curse and there ain't no end to it. He said that like the curse is that he has to keep on being in these sequels. And can we get another sheriff in here? People keep getting the movie series wrong. You've heard of Pumpkinhead. Ah, that's just a legend. It's real. Ed Harley started it. No, he didn't! and just let these families continue fighting amongst themselves. We're gonna take these Molotov cocktails in broad daylight. They won't even see it coming. <laughs> Sheriff Dallas doesn't give a shit. I can't let you boys do that. He didn't even hit him. Dallas is just pretending to be knocked out as not to deal with this petty bullshit. Now let's do this, boys. We're gonna destroy the Bigfoot County gift shop come hell or high water. Oh, please don't start fighting. <laughs> Who is fighting who? I still can't tell them apart. Let's take a break. They were right to go out there and start fighting. And uh, oh, oops, <laughs> mom's still inside. I'm sure she'll be fine. <laughs> we're back. Will they save the McCoy's mother? Drunk driving saves the day again. Just ask the editor to take out the CGI smoke and you'll easily be able to get out of there. And where the hell is Ricky during all of this? It's a movie about two lovers and it feels like he's barely in it. This calls for a family meeting. Bring your best flannel and whoever else wants to show up. Excellent, FDR is here. Oh wait, it's just you, Jesse Plemons in old man makeup. Well, this seems fine though. He brought the car back, they've called the truce, the families are good now. Old man Hatfield is even gonna get his job back as a TV director in Gotham City. There's peace in the land, we can wrap this movie up. There's still 30 minutes left. I'm guessing their fighting starts up again once they receive another case of s'more schnapps. If you're asking where Ricky is and where Pumpkinhead is, there's Ricky again, and there's the stock effect of Pumpkinhead that I swear I've seen reused about a dozen times now. I think I know why the sheriff keeps getting the backstory confused. There's no stopping this thing. You can't kill it. 
You can't reason with it. Oh, that's it. He accidentally saw the Terminator instead. That's where he knows Ed Harley from. Clearly, Ed did start it when he was originally considered for the role of the Terminator. Now they've got a new feud, though. Whether or not they need to kill Ricky to save themselves. We got children in this house. You're gonna stand by and let this thing kill them? A fine line reading. Now try it again after two more shots of wild turkey. I'm running out of things to say because it seems like half the movie's dialogue is characters describing what Pumpkinhead is, how ruthless it is, and what Ed's backstory is. Like it has to keep reminding you, no, you're not watching a Boggy Creek movie. Eventually, they give up talking about the other movies and just have Dallas monologuing about the events from the opening scene of this one. Damn near killed me, too. That seems infected. Has it looked like that for five years? And while you're all in here gabbing, Pumpkinhead is patiently waiting outside for you to finish. He's tired of your exposition dialogue. He will pull you outside if he has to. This movie isn't very good, but I do respect it. I admire they wanted to do something a little original, like combining the Hatfields and McCoys with a Shakespearean love tragedy and bringing Pumpkinhead into it. The problem is that the characters are all the same. From the acting style, to their personalities, to their looks, I was constantly having to double check who was a Hatfield and who was a McCoy. Even the two main characters are so forgettable, I was losing track of what their names were too. Really, I wanted Pumpkinhead to show up and kill them all, not because I hate them, but because I kinda just want it to wrap up and be over with. There's only so many times I can see people shoot at this thing and fail. It'll sometimes momentarily bring me back into it though, like when a guy punches at it and his fist goes right into his mouth. <laughs> Oops. Some of the shots are a little funny, too. <laughs> I wish it cut back to the guy and he simply just had a very trimmed and styled mustache now. Like, ooh. Oh, and like the third one, the Ed Harley stuff is still pointless. I am trying to save you from my fate. I can't even see my son. And they got me babysitting Tommy Pumpkins. Keep showing Pumpkin Ed punching people. I like that. Ah! Don't worry, he's got another one in him. Ah! Ow, God, I can't think of an original line now. Smile, you son of a bitch. Yes, just like Jaws. Now put a scuba tank in his mouth. We know where this is going. Ricky is gonna save Jody, of course. Put her down! I meant put her down easily. Don't be rude. Yes, yes, they defeat the monster by Ricky dying. But I'm more intrigued by how I don't think Lance is really here for this. They green screened in his ghost. <laughs> Still looks better than the two of them falling down a well. Damn, and I so wanted Ricky and Jody to end up together. <laughs> Kidding, I don't care. And that's the end of Pumpkinhead 4, where the crawdads sing. I'm assuming the movie did well enough that the Sci-Fi Channel was considering making another sequel until the magic word of reboot got brought up. So the franchise has been stuck in remake hell for a handful of years now. Supposedly it's got a script and is from a producer on the Saw movies. Just whoever handles it, make sure to attempt to explain Pumpkinhead's deformed son. Now that we're at the end of our series run through, it's time to thoroughly answer which one was the best. <laughs> the first one. Bye. Leave me alone.